Greg flies a Learjet with a top speed of over 500 miles an hour, and today, he's going to need it. A young boy's been severely injured in an ATV accident near Barrow, Alaska. It's the most northern point in the entire country. But the closest trauma center that can treat his injuries is in Anchorage, over 700 miles away. Okay, this is Heather with Guardian Flight. I'm calling to get a quick report on the post-ATV accident. Nurse Heather Grant is part of Greg's medevac team. Yeah, I believe it's a 12-year-old. Okay, on our way there. Um, we're going to Barrow to pick up a uh, post-ATV accident. He has facial trauma, some lacerations, hematomas, loss of consciousness. Heather's partner is Doug Green. I don't know if it was a rollover or what was going on there. Without immediate care, the child may be paralyzed for life. Anything else he can think of? This is the crew passenger oxygen here. There's depressurization, anything else like that. There's a mass to drop down. So just trying to get make sure they're topped off. Well, we'll get the airplane loaded and taxi up out of here. I'm from Ohio originally. We get to fly into places that you could never even imagine going to. You never really know truly what you're getting into. Things change and pretty much you're walking into the unknown. Even in a Learjet, the trip to Barrow will take an hour and 15 minutes. How we manage this kid in the next couple of hours could easily and realistically be the difference between him being in a wheelchair for the rest of his life or being able to ride that four-wheeler again. It's absolutely that crucial. Four hundred miles north, pilot Greg Johnson and nurse Heather Grant are heading toward the town of Barrow at over 500 miles an hour. They're en route to pick up a boy who's been critically injured in an ATV accident. We'll get to Barrow, somebody will pick us up, we'll get to the hospital. It's their mission to get him back to Anchorage as soon as possible. The patient has an injury to the neck already. You want to make sure that the injury is not worsened by movement. Here's Barrow. You always have to go into a case with the open mind, I mean, it might be a lot more than you think it is. More than 300 miles north of the Arctic Circle, Barrow is on the outer edge of Alaska. No roads connected to the American continent. Heather and Doug hurry to the town's only hospital. Within minutes, they find their patient, Dakota Donovan. Dakota, where's your pain at, Dakota? Squeeze my fingers. Give me a squeeze. Okay, good. You doing okay? He does look pretty injured. Yeah. Dakota still has control of his limbs, but without a detailed CAT scan, they can't tell how damaged his spinal cord is. All right, Dakota, we're gonna get you ready to go here in a moment. We're gonna get you on the airplane and take you to Anchorage. Right now we're leaving the clinic and head into the airport. He's splinted up well, his neck is immobilized. I'm checking on him frequently with his neurological status, make sure he's waking up well for us. Dakota, do you remember the accident? Yeah. Were you trying to make a turn? I was trying to let her slow down and turn. Oh, okay, so you weren't driving? Mm -hmm. No, okay. Dakota, did you have a helmet on? My son, my niece, and my two grandkids were on our way to go to camp. My son let his cousin drive the four-wheeler and didn't realize there was a turn there, so that's how they rolled. The trip back to Anchorage should take an hour and 15 minutes, but weather delays or a bumpy flight could rob the team of precious time and leave Dakota permanently paralyzed. We, uh get into a lot of weather situations such as turbulence, 
poor visibility, low ceilings. We have to worry about the patient and the pilot has to worry about getting a cell phone. High above central Alaska, pilot Greg Johnson races ATV accident victim Dakota Donovan to an Anchorage trauma center. Time is of the essence, especially critical patient. The quicker we can get them to the hospital, the better it's going to be. But worsening weather and mounting turbulence is beginning to slow him down. I was going to go up another 2,000 feet level off and get out of the bugs. Dakota, you doing OK? For Greg, it's a calculated gamble. The higher altitude will smooth out the flight and allow him to fly faster. But it could decrease Dakota's oxygen levels and aggravate his head injury. Dakota, doing OK still? OK. Nurse Heather Grant is in charge of keeping Dakota stable during the flight back to Anchorage. The altitude can definitely affect the pressure and all that in the brain with bleeding. So we're just going to keep on checking him frequently, making sure that he's answering me appropriately. But as the jet gains altitude, Heather begins to worry. Dakota. Hey there, buddy. Dakota. Dakota, hey, he's not where I want him to be. I want to ask them maybe if we can drop altitude. He's very sleepy. Could we? OK. I'm a little concerned about the head trauma. It's very slow to arouse. OK. So, and with no CT scan of any sort, I don't know what's going on. So. Greg begins to drop altitude. Hey, buddy. But it may be too late. Dakota. Dakota. Look at me. Dakota. 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 12 year old Dakota Donovan has become unresponsive. Dakota. Can you wake up and just answer me real quick? patient is having difficulties right at this altitude, so we're actually going to descend down a little bit lower. Dakota, open your eye. Dakota. Hey, Dakota. Hey, there you go. You doing okay? Yeah? Okay. okay. Within minutes of the jet's descent, Dakota comes to and his vital signs recover. He's doing much better now. I was definitely worried for a second there. 10 minutes later, Greg descends towards Anchorage and the team prepares for landing. We'll get him unloaded and get him loaded into the ambulance and then head to Alaska Native Medical Center. We just landed, okay? Okay, one, two, three. And we're gonna load him in and I'll be right by his side. Almost to the hospital, buddy. Dakota, are you doing okay? Okay. At the hospital, Heather and Doug rush Dakota into the arms of the trauma team. Dakota is um, doing okay. He's still um, answering appropriately, following commands. Vital signs are stable. Only a CT scan can reveal the extent of the damage to Dakota's spinal cord. Oh, okay. So I'm seven minutes out of Wainwright, and I get a call that there's an ambulance waiting at the airport, and they got a patient that needs to go to barrel. Typically, these would be set up with medevacs, but in this case, they knew I was only seven to 10 minutes out. I guess he was complaining about chest pains, and uh, I'm gonna do my best to get this airplane unloaded as quick as I can. But if any of this corrosive uh, ends up spilling because we're trying to move it too fast, we may end up taking more than one person to the hospital. I got to get the airplane unloaded, get it reconfigured, get this patient on the airplane. Fuck said, yep. <laughs> If it's come to the point that they're putting him on my airplane and needs to move now, 
that I need to try my best to get him to barrel as quick as I can. There is a clinic in Wainwright. Uh, they obviously think that his chest bands are bad enough that they need Barrow Fire and Rescue responds to the call, driving across town to the airport to wait for Luke to land. When it comes to cardiac conditions of any kind, the quicker that you can get them to advanced uh, medical treatment and uh, proper testing facilities, uh, the better the patient outcome is. Every cardiac emergency should be treated like a serious medical emergency until it's proven otherwise in a hospital. Well, we're just getting ready to start our descent into uh, Barrow. And we got to get this guy on the ground. Uh, He's looking like you sweat the back there. I can't get this plane on the ground quick enough. If this guy goes into cardiac arrest or something like that, I want to make sure we're on the ground to barrel. They're there to take care of him. Three golf pictures down here. You can help him. He had uh, chest pains. Got it, Doug. Yep, we got it. OK, you pull yourself in. All right, you ready? <sighs> the ambulance crew did great. I mean, there was a whole handful of people out there. We backed the ambulance up, got in, got this guy on a stretcher, put him in the back of the ambulance. They drove off to the hospital. So. It couldn't have really happened any quicker. You know, we got him to barrel within, shoot, 35 minutes. So, I mean, he can't get much faster than that. Hopefully, everything goes okay for him. 